Fall is all about change. We've already seen a quick change from summer to winter in the last couple of weeks and then a return to more autumn-like weather. The calendar is changing from September to October, from school startups to pumpkin spice and Halloween. Change is happening for us at TLUMC too. We've had a great summer of outdoor drive-in worship services that we've been able to host in person and broadcast online. It's been a great experience as we've had the chance to worship together in the beauty of God's creation, despite all the limitations of the pandemic. We've learned a lot from the experience. And one of the things that we've learned is that worshiping out at the crosses together will likely continue as a tradition for us in the future as well, as we imagine gatherings of our whole church family to worship, maybe even have a cookout together, as hopefully as soon as next summer. But the change in seasons and the change in the weather mean that we have to move to a new phase of Sunday morning worship. The one thing that hasn't changed just yet is our need to maintain social distancing and to do our best to protect one another. I hope and pray that we will soon be back to worshiping together in the sanctuary as a whole church family. And I'm confident that that day is not too far around the corner. As soon as we can be fully open on Sundays with multiple worship services, crowds, coffee, and conversation, we will do so with great enthusiasm. For now, however, we are still in a phase where we need to continue to follow the guidelines of our local, state, and conference officials. Remember, our first general rule as Methodists is to do no harm, and we're going to do our best to maintain our worship life while ensuring everyone's safety. To do that, we're going to offer three new opportunities for worship and connection, including an in-person option, beginning on Sunday, October 4th. The first opportunity is a new online Sunday morning worship experience we're calling The Table. In the early stages of the pandemic, we quickly pivoted to worshiping online, showing the basics of one of our normal Sunday worship services each week. What we found, however, is that while the elements of worship are important, what people seem to miss the most is connection with one another. The Table will offer an online experience that brings together video check-ins with church families, testimonies, a children's message, and informative segments all designed to help us feel more connected as a congregation. Yes, there will be scripture, a sermon, and time for prayer along with some music, but we want to make this an interactive experience that enables our church family to see and hear from one another in a new way each week. We'll be preaching and teaching from this table, for example, and the green screen behind me enables us to be in any setting anywhere in the world, which is kind of cool. The table is grounded in the idea that many of the most important events in the life of Jesus and the life of the church and in our daily lives take place at a table. We're gonna invite you to sit together at your table on Sunday mornings and join us for worship. Maybe you'll join us over breakfast or brunch or even lunch. You can send us a video of your family eating together. Maybe even send us your favorite breakfast recipe. Send us a picture of your family doing something fun. Send us a question you've always wanted to ask about the church or about the Christian faith, and one of us will answer it on the air. Got a testimony of what God is doing in your life? Send us a video of that too. The table will air every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. and 11 a.m., but will be available to watch anytime on our website. We'll be pre-recording the service, but that gives us plenty of opportunity to include your video input. We'll have more details coming soon on how to do that. The second opportunity is an in-person Sunday morning communion service. We've reset the sanctuary to follow the guidelines and allow for social distancing, which gives us a capacity of about 40 people. Starting on October 4th, we will have a short service of communion here in the sanctuary at 9.30 a.m. That service will feature liturgy, scripture readings, a brief homily on one of the lectionary texts for the week, which will be different from the main sermon you'll hear broadcast, during the table, and then the sacrament of Holy Communion. All those who attend this service will be asked to pre-register. Masks will be required at all times, except for when consuming the communion elements. This will be a quiet, reflective way for us to share in the sacrament. If you are still staying safe at home, let us know and we'll be glad to extend the table and deliver consecrated communion elements to you after this service on Sunday morning. Now we recognize that this isn't the kind of sanctuary service we've been hoping for just yet, but it does give us an opportunity to move in that direction. Since space will be limited, we're asking that you plan initially to attend one of these services per month, 
so that everyone has a chance to attend. Maintaining our requirements for masks, cleaning, and social distancing will be essential for continuing this service from week to week. We'll send out more detailed guidelines via email soon. A third opportunity, if you're up for it, is to gather together as home churches. Small groups of families may want to get together on Sunday or on another day of the week to watch the table, to share a meal, and then to use our weekly devotional guide for some discussion. Keep the group small, follow social distancing guidelines, but consider this option if you're longing for some additional connection and you feel comfortable meeting with others in your circle of friends and acquaintances. We'll invite you to set up these small home churches on your own at a time and at a place that's convenient for all. Now all of this begins on Sunday, October 4th. Our last drive-in worship service will be on Sunday, September 27th, weather permitting. Again, these new opportunities are not the ideal, but like drive-in worship, they may provide us with some new habits and practices that we can carry over even after the pandemic and come out an even stronger and more connected church family on the other side. We thank you for your continued prayers, for your support, for your generosity, and for your patience. We are getting through this together, and I'm very proud of the ways in which we have continued to be the church in a difficult time. Blessings to you, and we'll continue to see you each Sunday online or in person.